We continue our profile of Jackson State University, whose athletic programs have won 149 Southwestern Athletic Conference Championships. Now let's hear from JSU's new head football coach, primetime, our friend Deion Sanders, who was interviewed on our behalf, I love this, by his sons and members of the Tigers football Coming team, back. keeping it in the family. A lot of star Happy power just... to Doran Shiloh teary-eyed because the guys have presented me with the game ball, one of the best moments I've ever had in my professional sports career emotionally. What was the reason you wanted to be the head coach at Jackson State? And what really just brought you here? You guys, I wanted to coach you guys on the same before, team again. Before you knew we was coming, what, what brought you over here? Uh, God spoke in my spirit and uh, challenged me to come here and provoke change, not just at Jackson State, but for all HBCUs and level the darn playing field. The people want to know how far we're going to take it, though. I mean, we know, but... We're going to the bridge, baby. And we're going to cross it. And we're going to go back across it. And we're going to go back across it again. When have we ever have done anything? They ain't never have done nothing. So we're going to do this thing like it has never been done before, but there's an expectation of that. You know, I have an expectation. I think what people got to understand is uh, not only me, but several members of the coaching staff, we come from the pros, man. So our level and our thought process and our understanding is here and what we've seen, what we've felt and what we've dealt with in the Super Bowls and all that and the playoff games. Man, we, we, we have experience and we know how this look. How would you have coached a younger version of you? Here go Primetime 2.0 right now. Yeah. How would you coach me pretty much? Oh well, oh well. You you are tough. You 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 are the son to keep me on my knees and keep me praying. Because you you're challenging. You're very challenging. You always have questions instead of just doing what we tell you. Do we always have questions? He on the other hand, um, he gets what I say later. But he internalizes it and he, he tries to incorporate it, but he'll see the fruit thereof of it later. But both of you guys are phenomenal players and I think you're going you're gonna to play on Sundays one day. So how does it feel to be able to coach us now at the next level? Well, it feels good, but I hadn't been able to coach you guys at a college game. You Both of you guys are ineligible to play because he played last year in South Carolina. You still consider the high school kid even though you graduated from high school, so you're not eligible to play until September 25th. As of right now, if my count is correct, I think we're at 192 days. Something yeah. like 192 days until we get down. September the 5th. So I'm counting those days down. Well, I, I walk towards the end zone and our conversation thereof that we will have, and when we hit that end zone, that pile on and come back the other way, it's time to get down. So since we got players that can't play and you know, the players are already here. What are you looking to get out of this season, this, this spring season? And you guys got to be excited. You, you guys got to be excited to understand that what we did this past Sunday, and we did that with probably four or five guys that is going to have to fight for a starting job in the fall on both sides of the ball. And that equates to a better special teams as well. And uh, we were very dominant in all three phases of the game, and I was particularly happy about that. How do you think HBCUs We'll get big players coming out of high school. Well, everything, every phase of it, we got to improve so that we can attract those type of kids. So we, we don't give them any reason not to. We want to give them every reason to. But I don't want a child just coming here because the uniform looks good or uh, he, he think he's going to be on TV every week. I want him to come here because he think we can develop him um, and take him to the next level. That this is an address as well that can lead to the NFL. That's why I wanted him to come. What message do you have for Stephen A. Smith? Stephen A. is my dog. Stephen A. is my man. Even though sometimes we may disagree, but it's disagreeing out of love. I really do think Stephen A. is a national treasure that we hadn't yet recognized what all he brings to the table and how valuable he is to our community and to our people. All right, Dion already getting his first win. Look at that, 53 to nothing over Edward Waters. And next up, they have Mississippi Valley State, alma mater of the Hall of Famer Jerry Rice. And Stephen A., some kind words there. You heard Prime calling you a national treasure. Um, that's not appreciated as much as he should be, especially by your community. I also want to mention, guys, I love the way they did that interview, Shiloh, Shador, and just seeing him interact with his sons 
How much fun is that, that he gets the opportunity not only to be at an HBCU, help his own community, but also uh, be with his family? So, Stephen, I'll ask you this. What would be success for Dion at Jackson State? Well, he's got to be, you know, you got to win football games, win division titles, win a conference championship. The last one, the division title, I think, in 2013. And we last one, a conference championship in, like, 2007, if I remember correctly. Um, but, uh, you know, forgive me for diverting away a little bit. I, I didn't know that he had said that about me, and I'm really humbled and touched by what he had to say. Um, Dion and I have been friends for years, and uh, he's my brother. I love him dearly, and I have so much respect for him. Uh, knowing what he stands for, knowing what he's about. We share a lot of, you know, private and intimate conversations with one another throughout the years. And I know how passionate he is about coaching, but I also know how passionate he is about being the leader of young men. And that's what being a part of an HBCU program is all about. And he alluded to it earlier in the interview with his sons. Uh, and obviously they look like him, you know, they, they can ball and you can see how much of a proud papa he is. And I love the, just the imagery of them talking to him and interviewing him because just like he has strived to influence them, obviously, all their lives as, his, as, as their daddy, uh, this is what he wants to do. Uh, obviously, to a lesser degree, to some degree, a lesser degree, uh, to young men, young African-American men throughout this throughout this nation. This is a man that wants to make a difference, and he knows that he can, he has to utilize football to some degree in order to pull that off. So when you talk about him coaching this football team and striving for it to be successful, Max, he understands what it's going to lead to. The more successful he is at Jackson State, the more it shines a light on a program. As a light is shined on a program, ultimately he knows he can be the conduit to it shining a light on HBCUs. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.